One of the most confusing things for students is knowing how to properly paraphrase and summarize sources. What teachers and librarians rarely tell you is that there isn't a single right or wrong way of doing it. It varies by discipline and by profession. For example, when you're writing legal documents, you're expected to use the exact words stated in the law. Some businesses will reference the law. Others just know that everyone knows about this law, so it's sort of redundant to reference it. What you need to learn about paraphrasing and summarizing will come from experience working within your discipline and profession. What I'm going to cover instead is a way to view how authors in your discipline are using a source in their own writing. I recommend this strategy for those who feel that they're not as knowledgeable about their topic area or for those who feel confused about what a specific source article means. You can also use this strategy because you just want to learn more about how your discipline organizes research and constructs claims and evidence. The first step is to get the citation of the source you wish to paraphrase. Paste the source into Google Scholar. When you get your results, look for the cited by link. How many did you get? If you got none, then the source is probably fairly new, so you won't be able to use Google Scholar's help to paraphrase it. If you get at least one, you're good to go, but more is better. There are 28 articles you now have to look through. Each one of these paraphrased or summarized that source. This is my pot of gold. I want to paraphrase my source, but I don't want to get it way wrong. Every reader can have his or own perspective, but you don't want to be too off or alienate your audience. You can disagree with a certain interpretation of a source, but then you'll need to find many more sources to back you up. I use this technique all the time just to gauge my own reading. How close or far off am I from the majority? So I'm going to look for UCE links. I click on UCE links, click on the PDF icon. Now you have two choices. You can read the whole thing if you like in order to get more sources or learn more about your topic. You can then cite this source as well. Option two, select Control F if you're on a PC or Command F if you're on a Mac. Type in the last name of the author of the source. In APA writing, the last name is always used. I'm going to click on the arrow, then I'll be taken directly to the source that I'm interested in. The author of this particular article, Nigel Harwood, seemed like he used several sources from Swales, so he had several different years, so make sure the years match up. If they don't, no worries. You can still read all the paragraphs or sentences where this particular author is used. In fact, you may find even a better one than you currently have. Simply just go down to the References page and see if you can find any more sources from this particular author. When you actually want to just go and read those sentences and paragraphs in order to summarize and paraphrase, consider the following questions. What is the attitude toward the source? Is it revered or treated with skepticism? What did the writer focus on? When you go to check more articles from this list of 28, do they all focus on the same thing? Thus, is there a particular idea that this author is known for? Are there any key terms that are quoted from the original source? Do you notice others from the list of 28 paying attention to those same key terms? How are the writers from the list of 28 integrating the source into their writing? What words do they use to introduce the source? How do they talk about it or analyze it? My last suggestion is actually to copy and paste the passage from the sources that you're looking into into a single document. This way I can see how a handful of authors are paraphrasing and summarizing the source I'm interested in. When you do this, make sure you place the author and year of publication for each pasted item. Don't forget to place the quotes around each one as well. This is important because you don't want to accidentally steal anyone's work. I always open a separate document just for my notes so, to, so I don't make this mistake. Now you're ready to do your own paraphrasing and summarizing of your source. Again, I recommend this strategy for those who feel that they're not as knowledgeable about their topic area or for those who feel confused about what a specific source article means.
This concludes my video. Check out my other video on how to write an APA format.